Okay, so now we are dealing with an issue that came up when we were finishing up with basis and dimension, which was that it seemed like the proof there required an additional theorem, and also the theorem that it required seems to me to be an important and interesting theorem, so I want to just add it, I want to prove it. Okay, so the theorem was that if B is a basis for V, then every vector in V is a unique linear combination of vectors from B. Okay, and this is really the essence of a, to me, this is the essence of a basis, that it's a way, it gives you a way of, ex of expressing every vector in the vector space in a unique way. Okay. And from that, it follows that it, the, from that, if, if you, you can start from that, and then the linear independence and the generating fact of the basis follows. Or, as we're doing, in, as is done in this book, you can start from the fact that a basis is linearly independent and generates the vector space and show this theorem now that show this as a theorem instead of as a definition that every vector v is a unique linear combination of vectors from the from a basis from the okay so we have a, we'll have a basis v we have a vector space v and where we do this is very common when you want to prove something is unique which is that we assume we can express it in two ways and then we show that actually those two ways are the same. So the first thing to note, I think, is that certainly, because since V is a basis, certainly V, so let's take, a vector, let's take any vector V. So, so take any vector V in the vector space V. Now, since V is a basis, V generates V, right? So that means that V certainly can be expressed as a linear combination, right, of vectors from the basis. Okay. So that's a vector for oh, we'll call it set. say our basis is B1 to Bn, okay? So V is this thing for uh, where the alpha i's are in the real numbers, and this is because B generates the vector space, because it's a basis, okay? Now we suppose that there's also another way, that this way is not unique. Suppose we have some other way of expressing V, okay, with these scalars B, I, okay. Now what you do is you take V minus V, okay, which is then alpha 1, it's then in combination, so you use one expression for it, and you subtract the other expression, okay. Okay, but of course, this now just becomes a one b one. Now you have a, you can bring out this minus, and you can rearrange, right? See so if a one b one and minus b one, b two one b one, and then you have plus, you would have alpha two, and so on and so on, until you have alpha n, b n minus beta n, b n. Okay, but now you can factorize. You have alpha one minus beta 1, b1, plus, da, 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 plus alpha n minus beta n, bn. Okay, now v minus v, on the left-hand side we have v minus v, that of course is just 0, so we have 0 there. So now we have a linear combination, because each of these, each of these is actually just a scalar, right? We have a linear combination of the vectors from the basis equal to zero. But a basis is linearly independent. So that means that the only scalars that make, that make a linear combination of those basis x equal to zero are the scalars zero. So that means that alpha i minus b i equals zero for all i. Okay, there's no need to say that. So all the alpha i minus b i equals zero, and that's because b is linearly independent. Okay? linearly independent. But that means, of course, that the alpha i all equal the bi. Okay, so those two, those supposedly two different ways of expressing it, one with the scalars alpha i and one with the scalars beta i, actually they're the same. The scalars are the same. There's a unique, unique way of, ex of expressing it, of expressing a vector um, as a linear combination of basis vectors. Okay, so that proves this theorem.